got no time the world change damn the world change it's madden nfl 24 and we'll see brock purdy solid performance a week ago throwing for three touchdowns it's the packers and the vikings and it's coming up next on ea sports We are pleased, as always, to be bringing you coverage of the National Football League on EA Sports. Today, on to Week 15 in the NFL, and we've got a good matchup in store, as it'll be the Green Bay Packers taking on the Minnesota Vikings. Welcome again, one and all. Thanks for tuning in. I'm Brandon Gaughton on hand alongside Charles Davis. And yes, the storyline here, the weather. Snow and more of it expected as this game continues. So how will that impact how this one goes? Can these teams ignore the distraction and the strangeness of playing in a snow game? Because it actually affects the crowd as well. That big roar you get is all... The snow continuing to pile up at game time. And off we go on EA Sports. And no run back here, so they'll bring it out to the 25. So here comes the Packers offense now onto the field. And they'll be led out by their quarterback now in his third season in the league. Well, the silver lining from last week, he put... Purdy going to the air right away. And he's going to drop this off to Williams. Complete. Four yards the result on the first play from scrimmage. Second down. You look at this defense for the Vikings. They were very good in the win last week against Jacksonville. And they needed to be because that game was a game you don't see very often anymore. Low scoring, slugging it out in the trenches. One play can make the difference type of a game. And they got it done. Offense. Now they face a second and long following the holding penalty. Purdy. And he's going to go down. Back in his own five-yard line. It's a sack. Leonard Williams, the former number six overall pick, got the sack that time. All right, partner, I'm going to be Captain Obvious right here. Not the start you're looking for offensively, right? Incomplete pass, followed by a sack. And when he went down, it looked like that right ankle got turned, but thankfully he popped up okay, and they breathed a sigh of relief on that sideline. Near his goal line, here's Purdy. And this is going to be incomplete. That was the first third down try of the game, and clearly something was off in the execution of that play. Good news, they've got a whole game left to clean that up and start clicking on those key third down throws. The punt team on now is from their end zone. They get it away. Take it a couple yards shy of midfield. It'll be a net of only 30 here. 40-yard punt, 10 on the return. And the Vikings, they'll be set up well as they take over in great field position, first and 10. So now you've got their offense coming out for the first time with great initial field position. They will be led out by the six-foot lefty from Alabama. It's Tua Tonga Bailoa. That was a solid performance last week, wasn't it? Two touchdowns, no interceptions, ran the team well, won the ball game. Bottom line, may not have been earth-shattering, but it didn't need to be. And he works it past the 30, almost to the 25. They'll get 15 and a Vikings first down. We use the word relentless a lot with guys who are aggressive on the field. In this case, it really fits, doesn't it? How about his ability to break tackles and his feet never stop moving? Two and now on first down. Under pressure, and he will go down. Set back at the 38. Multiple players combined for their team's first sack of the game. Now that was a passer's nightmare. The front door totally shut down by the defense, so he kept going backwards, hoping to find another avenue of escape. It didn't exist. 
Throwing on second and long. Tua. And there is Amari Cooper, his first catch. Takes this to the 32, maybe the 31, and then the defense rallying quickly after that broken tackle. Third down at 13. Flag comes in. This might be a free play. That's incomplete, but there is a flag down. So hang on. A big call coming on third down. Yeah, that one was relatively easy to see. I noticed that from up here. Yeah, it doesn't take a whole lot, does it? Sometimes you get multiple. What I always love on these offsides is when each side points at the other. Hey, you did it. No, you did it. They deciphered that one correctly. Throwing his tongue of Iloa on third down here. That is going to be taken down back around the 35-yard line. Lucas Van Ness getting free there to bring him down. Field goal unit and Joey Sly now. From the left hash, this will be a 52-yard attempt. Sly able to put this one through. And the Vikings have a 3 nothing lead. So pretty good opening drive. That'll make the home fans somewhat happy. They won in six, but they got three in the early lead. And they should be happy. The guys are good getting down the field. That's got to give them a little bit of hope that good things are in store here today, Paul. From a yard or two deep, here comes a return. And ultimately, he stopped right where he would have been if he had simply gone down to a knee at the 25. The Packers offense here coming back out for their second drive. You know, in our research packet this week, prepping for the game, so many articles from the local beat writer about the offensive struggles of this team and what will they do this offseason? What do you think they'll do? Well, number one, they'll turn to their self-scouting report. And every team that's any good does this. They have outside groups check out their team, scout them, and tell you who can play, who can't play, and reasons why. Some of it may just be health. They have to get some guys healthy and back out on the field. But overall, evaluate this squad. It's caught inside the 25. It's a big play there for Green Bay. And even 50 yards. Well, partner, I'm not sure how this drive's going to end, but how about the way they flip field position there? A nice attacking play. They picked up a heck of a chunk of yardage. So how about this for field position after the big play? Inside the 15 now as they come up on first and 10. Now here's a look for the end zone, but that one's going to wind up incomplete. And I can see the officials kind of looking at each other down there, silently wondering, does this meet the level of grounding? Fortunately, he did have a receiver in the area, but I have seen less obvious throwaways called as penalties. Purdy got a man in Football. And the Vikings pick up the football. Whenever we call a game that's in the snow, we have to focus a little bit more, trying to make sure we've got the right numbers of players yeah. that we're calling right, the right guys in the game. Think about the guys on the field. Their focus has to really increase as well because so many things coming at you, you got to make sure that you're really locked in on taking care of the ball. Or if you don't, you cough it up like they did right there. The Vikings offense making their way back out. Now let's give you a look at the playoff picture coming into the weekend in the NFC. They'll take over deep in their own end after the fumble recovery as they start first and 10. And able to get it across the 10 to the 15. Trying to escape the shadow of their goalpost. That helped 10 yards first down. I guess it's good we can't really read the mind of the defensive coordinator now, huh? Had him pinned back there deep, give up that run. Can't be happy. Yeah, whatever was, whatever was in his mind right now, we probably couldn't say over the air. The numbers for Jones last week, 10 carries, 60 yards. They've lost a bunch of games in a row now. They've got to start thinking a little bit differently, maybe a little bit outside of the box. Find other ways to move the football. I don't know if you're going to do it through the air or maybe change up how you establish your run game. And seeing nowhere to throw, he chucks this one away from harm. Incomplete. Now it's third down. And now they'll stop play here, at least momentarily. A member of the Vikings in some discomfort after that last play. Trying to get one more in here before the quarter breaks. Going to the air. Tug of Iloa. And that is incomplete, but a penalty flag coming in. 
This could be a first down. Defense. So instead of fourth down, first down. Well, so much for winning the down, you put a lot of emphasis on because third down is key for offense and defense. Instead, you're going to stay on the field and start a new set of downs. Second quarter now from Minnesota. It's the Vikings in possession of the football as they've got it with a first and ten. After the penalty, it's Jones. And they'll get him down after a pickup of eight, second and two. And the Vikings come in looking for win number eight on the year. And they come in feeling pretty good after back-to-back -back victory, CD. And I thought that they played pretty well last week. Their execution, their discipline, their resilience all on display in that victory. Second catch for them today, and they'll wind up a first down. Now Tua. That's caught by the big tight end, T.J. Hawkinson. And they'll get him down as he's inside the 40. He'll get 15 and a Vikings first down. And what a nice example there of a tight end doing exactly what he needs to do. How about how he worked his way to the outside, made sure he secured the catch, and then anything after that, we count that as a bonus. And indeed, he gets enough for the first down. He's got his receiver, Cooper. And he gets this one inside the 15, just a yard or two shy of the 10. A good pick up there, 26 yards. They had to settle for three last drive, hoping this second go around ends in six. In good position, first and 10. From the shotgun, again to Jones. And here he'll get it down to the seven. Call it a gain of four on first, and that'll make it second down. Tua sets up to pass it. And that will be caught, but out of the end zone, says the field judge. It's ruled incomplete. So after the second down incompletion, they'll come up now against a third and six. Tua going to throw. And this is a rocket pulled in by Cooper. Complete. And they'll bring him down one yard shy after a pickup of four. That reception, it brings him up to the 700 plateau. He's at 700 career NFL catches now. And that club in baseball, a rather exclusive club, and one we talk about all the time, in football, puts in the top 50 all-time range. Not so bad either. So a long drive gets him down inside the five, but ultimately they settle for just the field goal. And I have to think that if maybe they were a yard closer, that would have made their decision tougher, and I think they likely would have gone for it. But in this situation, they just decided to take the three, and I think it was a smart move. And makes it across the 20 as his guys will set up shop at the 23-yard line. Purdy looking to throw on first down here. Trying to get it to Williams, but it's intercepted. Picked off by Byron Murphy. And he is going to bring this back inside the 20 to the 18-yard line. Well, if you go by the numbers, you'll find as the temperature goes down, so does the passing efficiency. And now that we're in December, even the routine throws are going to be harder for the quarterbacks. And this one, it winds up getting picked off. Now the Vikings offense works their way back onto the field. And following the interception, they're set up nicely here, already inside the red zone, knocking on the door, if you will, first and 10. So from inside the 20, here's first and 10 at the 18. After the turnover, it's Tua. And that is incomplete. Well, the coverage a little too good there, and it's second down. And inside give to Jones. And he'll get him inside the 15 down to the 14-yard line. Four yards the gain, and it'll bring up a third down. And we've hit the two-minute mark in this first half of action. A third field goal of the first half, not what they're looking for as they come up on third down. Here's Tua. Now the 
pressure gets there, and he goes down just inside the 20 at the 19. The Packers going to use one of their timeouts. It's just their first, so they'll have two remaining here before we get to halftime. So the interception set him up a terrific field position, but three points in the end result. Yeah, we can make this one pretty simple, partner. You always want to end drives with points, but that's one that you're going to look back on and probably say we should have done better there. And he'll be brought down right on the chalk of the 20. Green Bay's offense ready to go again. And for this offense, Charles, you got to think kind of crucial here to put something together on this drive because remember last time out, they threw the interception on the very first play. And you can't afford to let this defense keep building any more momentum. They're playing awfully well, and they're awfully confident right now. To me, it's time to attack and take some of that momentum back. But make sure you're selective in doing so. Understand where you want to throw the football and make sure it's open before the ball leaves your hands. Purdy now on second down. Looking right side, and that's complete to Watkins. And he's got it past the 30 before he's hit and dropped. On first down, Purdy. And his throw is going to be incomplete. And, Charles, you, you wonder about this defense coming in. I mean, look, it's no secret they're playing a team that's down on its luck right now. Losers of five straight. How does that change how you prepare for a game? Glad to meet him. The Vikings after him, and they get there for the sack. The Vikings going to signal for the first of their timeouts as they'll head to the sideline and talk over what to do next. And not a whole lot doing there as they'll get it up to about the 28-yard line. Now the Vikings will use the second of their timeouts. So that means they're down to one remaining here as we head toward halftime. And take it right on the 30. Minnesota's offense takes over possession. And they split the uprights last time for three. They've got the lead. They're not going to play this conservative. They're, they're not hoping for another field goal. They're hoping for a touchdown. I'm with you on that one. I like where your head is. I like the way you're thinking because you're exactly right. Trying to sit on a lead and play that way, that doesn't work too well for most teams. Run your offense. Yeah, Run what you do best. Exactly. Put it all the way down and try to push your lead in a big way. The best way to do it, touchdowns. The end result, 21 yards. And defensively, they were in zone coverage there. Do you have to be a little careful you're losing playing against a good quarterback like he is to not play too much zone? Yeah, you have to be careful about how much time you're giving up. I think it's a good point you just brought up. So maybe if you still want to play zone, you go to a zone blitz scheme, and you can drop anyone out of your defensive front, defensive end, defensive tackle. It doesn't matter. You just exchange someone to bring more pressure towards the quarterback and still try and cover downfield. And he's brought down at the 34. Call it a gain of four. And with just four seconds left in this first half, a timeout call. So with four seconds to go in the half, here's the field goal unit onto the field. On the left hash, officially it's called a 51-yard attempt. Sly able to put this one through. And that will extend their lead even further. So a big play before the end of the half to get him into this spot, and they cash in with three. How about the one-two to the solar plexus on that one? The big play, the field goal, not much time left on the clock. That's the way to go into the half. So we've reached halftime here in Minnesota with the Vikings on top. As we'll send you down to Orlando, we check in with Jonathan Coachman for our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. Okay, Brandon, time for a sprint to the finish as it's time to get you caught up with what's happening around the NFL here in a pivotal Week 15. We'll get started down at Hard Rock Stadium in Miami, and it's the Dolphins who have the lead in that one. The Dolphins trying to hold on and claim victory. Next, we'll take the trip north to the Steel City to check on the Steelers at home in Pittsburgh. And you can see, currently, they trail in that ball game. J.K. Dobbins with a touchdown run. Lastly, let's motor up to the Motor City. See what's happening with the Lions at home at Ford Field. And this one going the visitor's way as the Texans have the lead in that one. It's C.J. Stroud with a couple of touchdown passes. 
The big story thus far has really been the snow. It's made footing treacherous. And if the forecast holds, it's only going to get worse. But I can tell you as a fan, these are the games you love to watch. All right, coach, thank you. And we welcome everyone back for quarter number three. Not too many breaks ahead, according to the radar. More snow on the horizon as we are back underway in half number two. And not much happening on the return as he'll get this to about the 23. Now come the Vikings. They'll have it first on offense as we begin the third. And they got the lead. CD, what do you think the message was at halftime? I don't think the message was too drastic, I think, at the half, or that they need to change things too much. I do think the offensive line can play a little bit better. I think they'll try and help them out more. They'll probably keep a tight end in a few more times and maybe add a running back to the formation to pick up those pass rushers because they probably allowed a few too many sacks for comfort in the first half. And he'll hit the slant route. That's caught by Cooper. And he's got it past the 30 before he's hit and dropped. Five catches for him in that first half, and that's number six that we just saw, and also a first down. Looking to pass to him. This one swung out here to Jones. So the completion gets him just a yard, and that'll bring up second down. Tua setting up shop to throw again. He'll find Jones again, complete. Only able to gain a couple there. Third and seven now. So seven yards from the first down here as they come up to the line of scrimmage. Throwing now is Tugamailoa. Catch is made by Hawkinson, the tight end. And oh, he's just going to be short here, barely. Maybe by a half a foot. It'll be fourth and inches. And here's Ryan right now. And the way this offense has moved the ball, he hasn't been needed till here in the third. And the win last week punted four times as this one's away. And they call it 38 yards on the punt, no return. And the Packer drive will start from deep in their own territory with a first and ten. Here's Purdy on first and ten. Throwing quickly there, but it's incomplete. Well, they certainly aren't letting up today, partner, because they've forced big turnovers already, and it's been incredibly tough for them to get yards against, let alone put points up on the board. A second down throw for Purdy. He's got Watkins on the out route. Four yards the gain, and it'll bring up a third down. They are in need of six yards here if they hope to move the chains. Here's Purdy now on third and goal. Pass taken in by his big tight end. And past the 40 before he's out of bounds. That's a third down conversion of 24 yards there. Nice play. Well, a lot of times when you get a manageable third down situation like this, you have to think about your tight end. And he comes through for him, picking up the first down. Purdy will look to throw again here. Finding Williams on the check down. And he'll get up near the 45. They'll spot it at the 44. It'll be a gain of just a yard at its second down. Purdy will set up to throw it here. Throw right side. This is into the hands of the tight end, Tunyon. Second catch for him today, and it'll wind up a first down. But look what we have here, a sustained drive, and that was certainly a wall in the first half. They really struggled to try and move the football. But right now, they certainly seem to have the formula working. Let's see if they can. Oh, he tries to force it in, and it's intercepted. Picked off by Asante Samuel Jr. Down to the 10, and he will take this one home. It's a touchdown. Well, I mean, you get it. They're trying to make something happen here this third quarter, CD, but I don't think a pick six is exactly what they had in mind. No, not at all, because this offense, they've been stuck all game long. Haven't done it to scoreboard yet, and they're kind of forced to take a few chances here, and that one, it backfired in a big way. Joey Sly on for the extra point.
And that one makes this a 19-point game. So the defense creating some points, not only getting the interception, but then returning it to the end zone for the pick six. So they'll get another shot on offense following that pick six. And now the kick is away. And he'll get it up past the 20 to about the 22. Now trotting out there, the Packers getting ready to go. I kind of feel like they've reached a do-or-die point in this game, Charles. If they're going to try to pull off an impressive comeback, it has to start right here, right now. Yeah, now they've got a final chance to get out of this situation, but they also understand they've got to move the ball and move it fast. In addition, they need to save as much time so they can get two more possessions. Throwing on first down, but this one winds up to be incomplete. Now a second and ten. Here's Purdy. Got a man over the middle. It's Williams. And they're able to get this one across the 35. So here's a first and 10 at the 38. Purdy. And incomplete. Well, the incompletion, but now we also have an injured player. Well, the medical staff is going to come out here and take a look, and we will take a short break. A second and ten on a chilly, snowy December day, and I must say, I'm loving it. Kind of putting me in the holiday spirit. Charles, Charles hates it. He's giving me the evil eye, folks. And a five-yard gain gets him to the 42. It's a game of matchups, and that's why you take your receivers and move them around a bunch, especially your best guys. And when they work out of the slot, you often hear the coaches talk about how great it is because it gives you a two-way go. You can break out or you can break in. That makes it hard to defend. Now throwing on third down there, but he cannot connect. Well, partner, they've certainly played up to their top 10 defensive ranking this week. They've stifled this opposing offense throughout this game. This contest is now lopsided because of their efforts, and there's still a quarter to go. A 41-yard punt there with no return. And the Vikings will be backed up deep to begin their drive as they take over first and 10. Setting to throw on first down is Tua. This one caught. It's the tight end, Hawkinson. And he'll get this one way on just shy of the 45-yard line. Getting it to him in space pays off big time. That winds up going for 31. And they're not going to get to the line to run another play. So we will switch ends as the third quarter has come to a close. We'll return with more after this. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. They show run with three tight ends here on first down. Up the middle they run. Here's Dylan. And this will be taken across midfield and into Green Bay territory. Eight yards on the pickup, and now they'll have some options on second and short. Back to the ground, this time with Jones. And he'll go down, shy of the 40 at the 41. 40 yards rushing for him now on just six carries to this point. I tell you, they didn't give it to him much for the first three quarters, but when they have, he's been efficient. Maybe they ride him more here down the stretch. Yeah, hey, not sure it was actually in the game plan for him to have as few carries as he has, but it might play out really well for them now. As you noted, they want to ride him down the stretch. He should have fresh legs. Yeah, give him four yards there. It'll be second and six. Again, it's Jones. Just a couple on the pickup there, and now it's third down. Brandon, I've got to think this offensive line has got some smiles on its faces. And, and I know it sounds crazy, but they practiced for this back in training camp. They knew they'd be in situations where it'd be extra defenders in the box coming after them, trying to keep them from locking down the game. Right now, they want to show the world they're up to the challenge. They'll get nine out of that one, and as a result, the drive continues. And looking to put this game on ice in the fourth quarter, but still not afraid to throw it as they show there. You want to play the game with confidence, and they have a guy who's in control right now. Their trigger guy throwing it, they feel just as confident with him doing that as they would if they tried to run the ball and run the clock out. 
Two yards, the loss, second and 12. Yes, indeed, that play there, that reminds me of some of the guys that I played with to have that suddenness, able to get into the backfield almost about the time the ball snapped and make a play. How about that tackle for a loss? Absolutely. He did a lot of that last week when he was named the NFC Defensive Player of the Week. One of the guys on the team was saying, hey, yeah, we called him the disruptor, and that's carrying forward again. Makes sense, doesn't it? Third and 15 coming up after that loss of two. Two minutes left to play in this football game here on EA Sports. An awful lot of congestion in the middle third of the field, but how about our defensive tackle right there? He didn't just hold the line. He provided some push and smacked the ball carrier down for a loss. And he's going to get this one down to the 30. Only a yard on the pickup there, and it's going to leave him with a fourth down. field goal unit and Joey Sly now. This will be spotted at the 37, so it's a 47-yard attempt. Sly able to put this one through, and that will extend their lead even further. Well, ultimately, not really sure that they're going to need those three points, but they'll take the three, and they pad that lead. Yeah, this one's already wrapped up, but you and I both know, if you're an offensive coordinator, you never let up on the gas unless the head coach tells you to do so. And maybe you've actually clicked him off in your headset so you can keep calling plays and trying to add to this lead. The Green Bay offense now about ready to take possession here. We certainly had a sense coming in here that these guys were in for a tough one on the road. That has been how this ball game has played out. They trail big as we continue on now here in this fourth quarter. Oh, he dropped it. And that's pretty indicative of the way this one's gone. Second and ten. To throw again. Broughton. Now the pressure comes and he goes down. Just inside the ten, back at the nine. Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. And that is incomplete. different because on the previous play he was sacked this time protection a lot better had time to survey the field and still couldn't find an open receiver so from their own end zone here this kicks away and the return man will shuffle through the white stuff secure the fair catch with both hands so possession goes over here on the punt and it will be Vikings ball first and ten They'll start the drive with a carry by Jones. And that play going absolutely nowhere as he's belted before he could get out of the backfield. Yikes, a four-yard loss really sets him back now for second down. Now Dylan on the inside give. And again, the run defense stout this time. He maybe gets back to the line of scrimmage, but no more. So the final seconds have ticked away in this Minnesota victory. And this was truly a total team effort, Charles, on both sides of the ball. So they absolutely pitched a shutout, so it can't get much better than that, right? The defense led the way, but the offense did their part as well. They moved the ball up and down the field. So you got to like what you saw. What do they call that, a total team effort? I think when it's time to hand out game balls, guys from both sides will end up getting one. So for the Vikings, the win is their eighth on the year. And they'll hit the road next week to take on the Houston Texans. Meanwhile, for Green Bay, their slim playoff hopes are gone now as they fall to 5-9. and nine. And they'll try and turn things around next week as they have a date at Soldier Field with the Chicago Bears. And for Charles Davis and our entire crew here,